In this sub-lesson, we'll see how to implement local and remote authentication on UCS server. In order to perform local or remote authentication on UCS server, we can log in onto the UCS manager. The UCS manager is the UCS manager is a software tool which allows you to manage the UCS server for the servers, uh, SAN or virtual machines, or even LAN management uh, from one single uh, user interface. So we are onto the UCS manager, and on the UCS manager, you can get on um, the admin uh, panel. The admin panel has uh, different um, options such as uh, false events and even audit log, user management, key management, communication management, stats, and all the other things uh, which are related to the administration of the UCS servers. So we go on to the user management, and under the user management, we have uh, different functionalities. We can either perform uh, uh, authentication based on uh, local or remote authentication using LDAP, Radius servers, or TechAC servers, or perform um, role-based authentication by creating roles locally on the device and creating users and assigning roles to them. So let's begin with the local authentication um, on the UCS servers or the UCS manager as well. So we have um, uh, locally authenticated users. Before we get on to creating users, let's first create roles. So the roles on the UCS manager are pretty much equivalent to RBAC or role-based authentication mechanism on Nexus switches. So in this, there are already predefined roles. And um, we can create uh, a user role, say for um, my new role. And I can define certain uh, privileges, such as I am the admin, or um, I can um, do server maintenance, or I can do um, define pod policy, and I can look at the service profile, security policy, fault management, or um, and apart from that, I can look at uh, uh, operations, pod security, service profile, network policy. So all these permissions I've defined, I can also add the server policy and if I want to really get into the admin, uh, well, not define the admin role for this uh, new role, I can um, say I do have uh, some other permissions um, like AAA or uh, pod QoS, and um, that's it. So we can define a bunch of policies or privileges for this new role and uh, create the new role. And once we have done that, it's automatically populated on the list of roles that are available for the UCS manager. And then we can go on to the locally authenticated users. And from here, we can create a new user. So for creating the user, uh, you have different options that you can set. If you want to set the password strength check, you can set that. If you don't want it, then you can simply create the user saying named new user. And uh, you can specify the first named new user. And uh, if you want, you can set the email ID and password for the user. Else, you can um, go ahead with the password. And in the password, you can um, uh, set the password. Make sure that both the passwords um, are same. And then you can select the role that you are assigning to the newly created user. So in this case, we are assigning the role of my new role that we created uh, previously and uh, then we are going to say okay. So this will allow you to create uh, the new user and then you can um, log in on to um, this user. Now if you want to edit the information, there are other options as well. So say for you want to perform, for the SSH you want a password authentication so you will be using the password that you configured. But if you don't want password authentication then you can select the option for key which will require you to enter or save the public key from your local device. So say for if it's a Unix device, you can use the SSH-keygen to generate a public key and use the public key value to be entered in the SSH data section. Once you do that and apply, it will allow you to perform an SSH login using the key rather than the password. 
Uh, it's a more secure method of authentication, the key-based authentication rather than using the password authentication. So it's recommended in enterprise networks to use the key SSH keys rather than using password for logging onto the servers. So this is how you create the user on the UCS manager. Now, if you go to the authentication tab, you can see here the authentication tab is set to, the mode is set to local, and you can set it to any of the remote authentication methods such as Radius, TACAX, or LDAP if you want to. Don't set it to none because, well, it will remove the authentication part, but it's better either to use local or any of the remote authentication methods. We'll now take a look at how to enable the remote authentication. So you can select any of the remote authentications, but before selecting those remote authentication methods, it is first required to go on to the remote server tab and under the remote server, so say for you're defining the radius server, so you can go on to the radius server and um, you can create the groups that we used to create on NXOS similarly here. So we have the radius server provider groups. So you can create a radius server provider, enter the host IP address or the fully qualified domain name. So uh, let's say I put here 172.16.31.100 and uh, I can confirm the key as um, Cisco, Cisco. It's a simple key and set OK. Once I've done that, it should uh, populate the radius server here, and we have the details of the radius server. And uh, once done, we can move back to the user management section, and under the authentication, you can select the option for the radius. Similarly, go under the remote server, and if you want to define the TACAC server configuration or set the TACAC server, you can either define the group, it's up to you. So if you're defining the group, you are getting a bunch of options. So TechAx group, and um, you first need to define the TechAx providers. So uh, we haven't done that, so uh, we'll go back and create the TechAx provider. In this case, it's the provider, and we set the IP address 172.16.31.100. And we set the key, um, Cisco, Cisco. We set one of them, and then we can create another one. Let's say 172.16.31.101, and say Cisco, Cisco. Uh, you can set a different key. I'm just, for the example purposes, I'm creating a simple key, which is Cisco. And then I can create, um, so the TACAX providers are already listed here. Now we can go into the TechAx provider groups and create the TechAx provider group. And now both of them should be listed, and you can select what all servers will be part of this group. So um, group one, or say TechAx group one, and uh, okay. So we have created the group, and now we'll be using the group for authentication. Right. The final state machine, it's, uh, it shows the events that you have performed. And then you can go back to the user management and from the authentication tab, you can, um, under the native authentication, you can say, I'm going to use my TechAx server and use this group. Unless if you want to just use the provider, you can use the provider. But if you want to use a group, you can select the TechAx group one. And uh, if you want to enable two-factor authentication, that option is also available. But for now, we can just uh, move ahead with the TACAX authentication. And then under the console authentication, we can also select TACAX. And we can also make it part of the group one. And um, we can say, if you want to assign the role or no login um, for remote users, we can apply and uh, say OK. But if you want to assign the default role, we can do that as well and uh, say OK. And this will then allow for only tech based authentication. So this is how you can set the authentication on the UCS manager for authenticating or managing the UCS servers on, um, in your infrastructure. The next piece of authentication that you can apply on the, for managing the Cisco UCS servers is on the UCS director. So on the UCS director, you can go ahead and log in and uh, once you log in, it will take you to the dashboard of the UCS director. And from there, you can go under the administration 
and um, you have an option for um, the users and groups. So you can click on the user and groups, or you can also go for the LDAP integration if you want to. But user and groups is the place that you can use to perform the authentication uh, for the user groups. So here, first, you can create a group for your uh, the department or organization. So say for you create a group named uh, uh, management group or uh, UCS management group. And I can say um, the email as admin at, and you can enter the email address. And here you can enter the email address, say UCSMGR at cisco.com maybe, or your own domain name. And once you assign the email ID, you can then go ahead and click on add. So once you added the UCS management group, here you can then go to the users tab and click on creating a new user. So under the user, you can use the defined user roles and the user roles are admin or billing admin, computing admin. So we can go in and say computing admin and say UCS new admin and say password. So it says recommended to use alphanumeric characters, say A to Z, caps A to Z and uh, zero to nine. So we can go ahead and say Cisco one, two, three, four, five, and say Cisco one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you're using a pretty simple um, username and say UCS new admin at, at cisco.com and um, new admin. So we have entered the details and we can select or so we have different locale options as well. So you can set the state of the user if it's going to be disabled or set user disabled date. So if you want to enable it for a particular time, you can do that. But if you don't, then um, it should be OK. And um, apart from that, it should um, allow us to create the user. So we now create the user. And under the new user that we created, we can go ahead and say it is going to be part of uh, and once we have created the user, we can say um, group membership, uh, member of none right now. And uh, right now, it cannot be assigned to any group. But if I want to um, make, it make a user part of the group, I can always go to the service end user group. And this will allow me to assign it to part of the user group that I created. So I can go ahead and say UCS management group. And I can say save. And uh, when this is enabled, you will see that it is now part of uh, the UCS management group that we created. So it depends on what kind of user that you're creating. If it's an end user group, then you can assign the user groups. Else, if it's part of your predefined policies or roles, then um, it cannot be assigned to a group. So in this case, we are creating a computing admin group. We are assigning the role of computing admin, and we are creating this new user. So. This is how you can create users and groups on the UCS director. Apart from that, there's the password management policy as well. Uh, you can edit the password management policy if you want the minimum password length to be like some eight characters and then a maximum value. Or if you want uh, the minimum character classes, it's uh, the different character classes. And then you can also define the grace period for the password and the password expiry in days. So if you want more aggressive passwords to be changed, uh, if you want passwords to be changed more aggressively rather than 365, you can set it to 180 days to allow it to change the password. So there are different settings that you can um, perform here. And uh, previous passwords um, uh, count is like three. So unless you have, uh, you cannot use the past three passwords. So uh, that's what you can set it from the setting and submit. Once you have done that, you're done. The authentication section also allows you to uh, set the settings for um, the authentication preferences. So local first, fall back to LDAP, or you can have the very sign identity protection, uh, which uses the digital signature. We are not using that right now. And if you have uh, a SSO login or single sign-on login in your organization, you can enable the SSO login from, 
from here. So you will have to select a file for enabling the SSO. And then once you select the file, uh, it will allow you to set the SSO login for the UCS director as well. And uh, the group share policy and the sessions uh, session management are some other sections that you can uh, play around with to change different settings. But primarily for user management or authentication purposes, you can use um, the UCS groups, uh, users, the LDAP authentication that we saw from uh, the LDAP integration section. You can use the single sign-on, uh, SCP user configuration. So this is your user for performing the SCP, the secure copy protocol. And that's all uh, for the UCS director authentication.